So we've seen now how we can emulate classes using this constructor function right here. And we attached a method to this constructor function so that every object that is created using this constructor function has that login method right there. Now, instead, I think in a lot of cases, it's better to use the prototype property to add methods. So I want to talk a little bit about that in this video. So remember back when we've been looking at objects in the console, we saw that our object had that underscore, underscore, proto, underscore, underscore property. I'm just going to call that proto from now on instead of all those underscores. And anyway, inside that, we could see all of the different methods attached to that particular object that we could use on it. So as a quick example, let me just make an array. I'm going to say var nums for numbers is equal to one, two, three, four, five. Doesn't really matter what's in this. Now, if I log this to the console, we can see if I open up this nums array right here, we have these different properties and the length, but we also have this proto property right here. And inside that proto property are all the different methods that we can use on this array. Now, if we wanted to use one of those methods, we would not have to say something like nums dot underscore underscore proto dot underscore underscore then the name of the method like sort. We don't have to do that. JavaScript automatically proxies all of those methods like sort up onto the object itself. So I can just call it directly. OK, so anything inside this proto property we can call directly onto the object itself. OK, so cool. That's where all the methods are so far. And it's not just with arrays. This is the same for any object type that we create. Even the user objects that we created using the class keyword previously had this proto property. And even the user that we've created right here without using the class keyword will have this proto property. I can demonstrate that if I type out user one, then we can see this user right here. And we can see this proto property is right here. Now, when we used the class keyword back in previous tutorials and we added methods to those classes, then those methods weren't directly under the object right here, like this login one is. Instead, they were attached into this proto object right here. Now, this time around, we don't have that. They're not inside that proto property. Instead, they are directly inside the user object. And that's because we've attached this function right here directly inside the user constructor. We've not attached that login function, that method to the proto property. So we need to figure out a way that we can do that. But first of all, what even is a prototype anyway? So we're talking now about attaching our methods to some kind of prototype property instead of directly onto our objects. But why? Well, first of all, let's understand what a prototype is. Now, every object type has a prototype. A date type has a prototype, an array type has a prototype. Any custom object type or class that we try to emulate, for example, a user will have a prototype. Now, this prototype of each different type in JavaScript is like a map for that object type. It contains the functionality that is the different methods for that object type. And for any object created of that type, the proto property, that's the underscore underscore proto underscore underscore property, will point to that prototype and it will know how to use these different methods. So this way, the methods are not being repeated over and over in each different user instance. We're not kind of hard coding those into each different instance. But instead, what we're doing is defining them once on a single user prototype like this. And then when a user object wants to use that method, it will know how to do that because it's proto property right here that will point to the user prototype. So in this way, we're kind of borrowing these methods right here from the prototype instead of having them stored directly on the objects. And this way of working using prototypes is more efficient and will allow us later to work with prototype inheritance. So let's try creating a prototype for our user type and seeing this in action. OK, so we know that every object type will have a prototype property. An array has a prototype property. A date has a prototype property. And so does our new type user right here. All right. So how do we access this prototype property? Well, we can just say user dot prototype like so. That is our prototype property of our new emulated user class, right? The name of this function 
dot prototype. Now notice we can't call prototype on the instances of those objects. For example, this does not have a prototype property. It's just the constructor function right here that has that prototype property, right? Not the instances of that object type. The instances have that underscore proto property, which points to this prototype of this thing right here. So anyway, now what we can do is attach methods to this prototype of the user. So to do that, all we need to really do is say dot then the method name, which is going to be login, and that's going to equal to a function. And inside this function, what we'll do, first of all, is say this dot online. By the way, this will refer to the object that we call this function on. For example, if we say user2.login, this will refer to user2 inside this right here, inside this function. So we'll say this.online, which is this property, and we'll set that equal now to true because we're logging in. So online is going to be true now. Then what we'll do is just create this message in the console. So I'll copy it from there and paste it down below. So now what we've done is defined this login method on the prototype of the user. And instead, we don't have to define it right there inside the constructor function, right? So now, because the proto property of these instances is going to point to this user prototype, we're going to see that login function now in that proto property and we can use it. Now let's just do one more. I'm going to copy this and paste it down below. And this time I'm going to call it logout. So that's going to equal a function as well. This time we'll change this dot online to be false because we're logging out. And then we'll console.log this dot email has logged out. All right, so let's give this a whirl. So let's open the browser. First of all, we can see that user logged to the console and we can see when we're calling user2.login, it's still working right there. I can say user1.login as well. That should work. And I could say user1.logout. That should work. Okay, so all this is working. And now if I type one of the users, user1, and have a look inside here, we can see now the function is no longer inside the object directly, but instead, if we open up this proto property, because this is now pointing to this thing right here, the user prototype, now we have access to those methods inside that proto property, login and log out, right? So we can use them as if they were attached directly to that object, but now we can access them via the prototype. Make sense? All right, cool. And remember, all of this stuff, creating a prototype for our emulated user class, adding the methods to that prototype, etc. This is all going on in the background when we use that class keyword instead. But now we're not using that class keyword and we're doing all of this stuff manually using this prototype model. Now, another benefit of using prototypes like this to add our functions, our methods, is so we can use inheritance, and we'll see that in the very next video.